Cases of three common sexually transmitted infections are rising nationwide, reaching an all-time high, and health officials are now raising alarm. Take a look at this new CDC report. Combined cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis have reached 2.4 million cases just last year alone. This is the fifth consecutive year we've seen increases in these numbers. States with the highest numbers, Alaska for chlamydia, Nevada for syphilis, and Mississippi for gonorrhea. And there was a rise in congenital syphilis. That happens when a pregnant mother passes the infection to her infant. Last year, it led to 94 infant deaths. That's one of the most tragic consequences for these STDs, but it's not the only concern. There's also the risk of infertility and the concern of drug-resistant gonorrhea. So what's causing this rise? One reason, more people are getting tested. We're diagnosing more cases. That's good news. Another reason is more concerning. Fewer people are using condoms. One study found that among sexually active high school students, there was a decline in condom use, dropping from 63% in 2005 to 54% in 2017. Not so long ago, the U.S. was doing pretty well when it came to STD rates. Gonorrhea was at historic lows. Syphilis was near elimination. Now, an official at CDC says that that progress has unraveled. Health officials are calling for more funding to go toward STD prevention programs. And they're asking for everyone to practice safe sex. And remember, get tested. We are entering yet another week of the impeachment inquiry into President Trump and all the developments. In this ever-changing story really are coming fast and furious. And CNN legal analyst Ellie Honig is back with us to help break it all down because you have sent in so many questions to him. And this is where we are bringing you your answers. Okay, we have a lot of documents obviously already at Congress's disposal when it comes to this impeachment inquiry, Ellie. So one viewer asks, can the House impeach Trump just on written documents or do they need to call witnesses and do any other investigations? So the short answer is yes. The Constitution very broadly gives the House sole power of impeachment. So whether whatever the House really decides is good enough is good enough. Now, in 1998, when Bill Clinton was impeached, the House impeached him based solely on the Ken Starr report. There was no additional witness. There was no additional investigation. But I think we're looking at a different situation here with the Ukraine because there's still so many unanswered questions. And I think the House really does need to continue doing an investigation. We're already seeing new information come forward the text last week now a second whistleblower so at a certain point though the house will decide now we've got enough to vote and then they will no president has ever been impeached and removed from office right. so when viewer asked could trump be impeached and removed and still run again in 2020 a lot of people ask this question i think it's because trump has defied expectations yeah. so many times the short answer is probably not the constitution says that if the senate convicts then the person the officer will be removed from office and disqualified to hold and enjoy any office in the future so on its face it seems he could not run again however there is some again little history lesson in the early 1900s, at least three different times, federal judges were impeached, and then the Senate separately voted, okay, he's out, but do we also disqualify him? And at least with one of them, the answer was no. So he's removed, but he's not disqualified. That said, as a practical matter, if the president is impeached, even if he's not disqualified, it's going to be very difficult politically to run and win again in 2020. But then again, don't put anything past Donald Trump. He has defied expectations before. No kidding. Okay, another viewer <laughs> asked, if Trump is impeached and removed from office, which means Mike Pence becomes president, how is a new vice president picked? So the answer is in the 25th Amendment. The answer is the, the president or new president chooses a vice president, and then that person has to be approved by a simple majority of both the House and the Senate. Now, the 25th Amendment was passed in 1967. It turned out just in time, because a couple years later, we had this wild sequence where first Spiro Agnew, who was vice president to Richard Nixon, resigned under a corruption investigation actually not related to Watergate, but he resigned. Richard Nixon then chose Gerald Ford, who was approved by Congress. Uh, of course, Richard Nixon then resigned. Gerald Ford became president, and Gerald Ford selected Nelson Rockefeller, who was in turn uh, uh, confirmed by both houses of Congress. So, of course, it's historically very rare to see this kind of game of musical chairs, but then again, we are in historical times right now. And what are your 
top questions for this week? I have about a million, but I'll <laughs> choose three. First of all, uh, how will the White House respond to the new subpoena that Congress served? That is a huge battle. We could end up in the Supreme Court in a Nixon-like decision. Second of all, will more career public officials come forward with more information? We know there's a second whistleblower, but courage tends to be contagious in this kind of situation. And third, will more Republicans start to show cracks, start to show some support for an impeachment inquiry? We've seen Mitt Romney potentially leaning that way, Susan Collins, others giving indicators, and I think this more than anything else will determine ultimately the fate of this presidency. A fight today in the Supreme Court over the meaning of sex, which will have major implications for LGBTQ workers across the country. The nine justices seem split during a lively session of arguments from attorneys for three plaintiffs who say they were fired because they are gay or transgender. I got mad enough to stand up for myself and do something about it. Amy Stevens was fired from her job as the director of a Michigan funeral home in 2013, shortly after she announced she was having sex reassignment surgery to become a woman. I've known from the time I was about five that I was different. Stevens won in the lower court when her former boss admitted that she was fired because she was no longer representing herself as a man. Thomas Rost says it all came down to the company's strict dress code policy that mandated Stevens dress according to the sex assigned at birth. After much thought, I determined we could not go along with the employee's proposal. It was a difficult choice, but I felt it was in the best interest of the grieving families our business serves. The Justice Department has taken the position that Rost and other employers like him have done nothing illegal when they terminate employees for their gender identity or sexual orientation. The Trump administration points to Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, prohibiting employment discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Attorneys for the employers say sex is strictly defined as gender and does not extend to sexual orientation or identity. You cannot read into words or read into the statute words that aren't there. And so when an employer is not taking the sex of the employee into account, that's not a Title VII violation. I don't understand how someone can separate sexual orientation out of the word sex. Bill Moore was baffled when his partner Don Zarda was fired from his job as a skydiving instructor on Long Island after he told a customer he was gay. Moore and Zarda's sister Melissa took up his legal fight after Zarda died in an accident in 2014. He knew he could trust us and he knew it was for the greater good, not just for his case but for everybody. Now Zarda's family, along with Stevens, will have to wait months to find out the result of their fight. Whether our decision is favorable or not, we still have a lot of work to do and we just get ready for the next leg of the journey. And it's conservative Justice Neil Gorsuch who could be the key to this case. He said in arguments it could be a close call about whether sex encompasses sexual orientation and gender identity. But he also wondered if such an interpretation could cause a massive social upheaval, in his words, and if it was better left up to Congress. In fact, the House has passed the Equality Act, which protects LGBTQ individuals from discrimination and 22 states plus Washington, D.C. do have statutes protecting workers. Jessica Schneider, CNN, Washington.